Hello, my friends. I'm Courtney, and I am here to take you through a process called Doodlescapes that we are in a series of. This would be lesson number two. Um, if you want to see the first one that was a live stream, that's going to be in our Facebook group called Art with Ava. And if you search Art with Ava, it should pop up as the top one. Um, and then you can request to join and watch our live video there. But today is going to be session two on this process that I've called Doodlescapes. Now, I have not done research to find out if someone else has taught Doodlescapes. So if someone else has come up with that term, full credit goes to them. But it was the easiest verbiage for me to use to teach this particular process. This is something that's going to be great for beginners, um, fun for intermediate to advanced. If you are an advanced artist, by all means, take the inspiration, take it to the next level. This is just something to hopefully root you in the word and in meditating on the word of God in the Bible and just allowing Holy Spirit to flow through you to create and hopefully if you're a beginner, if you're brand new to Bible journaling or brand new to this kind of technique, it will inspire you and unlock a whole nother avenue of art as a tool for worship and for study of the word. So um, we're going to dive right in. I do want to talk about some materials. I'm going to be using primarily a Princeton Neptune brush number six. Um, I'm going to be using Kuretake Ganzai Tambi watercolors. This is a custom palette that I put together. I will take you through the um, swatches of each and I will also insert footage of the individual numbers if you want to build the exact same palette. However, you can also use the swatches to get a close enough approximation of each color. We will be journaling in an interleaved Bible in the book of Ruth, and I will be oriented to the left on this one. But this technique can go on any page of your Bible. If you've already journaled the book of Ruth, don't worry. You can apply the same technique, same colors, same concept to any passage in your Bible. So don't feel like you have to skip out just because of that. So here we have the Kiritake Genzai Tambis number 90. I'm going to give you the numbers of each here. We've got number 91. This is my favorite, number 906. We've got number 71. These may look a little different. I filmed a little later. That's number 47. Number 37. Yellow is number 40. White is number 10 and number 72. And then for the blues, we have number 60, number 63, and number 64. Here's the swatches. I highly recommend making your own swatch sheet for these projects. It just makes it so much easier choosing what color to move to next and it kind of takes the guesswork out of it for you now i'm starting with a very wet quill brush okay so i loaded it up with water and i'm starting with the blues and i'm going top to bottom for the blues um and i'm just see how wet that is like you can see the water moving on the page there is no particular rhyme or reason to why I started on the bottom left. I'm just making these somewhat circular blobbies. They're not perfect circles, but just really moving the pigment around. But as you can see, very, very wet brush. The Princeton Neptune brushes are very, they call them very thirsty brushes. They absorb a lot of water. Here I'm switching to another blue. So again, our base color here is going to be our blues. And I'm just adding at random different sizes of circles, different depths. Going in here with the third blue, I'm going to start overlapping here. And that's intentional. Now we're going to switch over to that really pretty rusty color. Same thing. We're just doing circles of random sizes 
they're not perfect very wet brush overlapping that is on purpose you can even see at various stages of the project you can see the under layer of blue and the borders and that's something that's just going to give this such an interesting quality going to go in with that more um to me more burgundy more wine color and see how when it touches the portions of that bottom right hand corner that were still wet the colors kind of blend and blur together that is exactly what i want to see happening and i apologize that the whole page isn't in frame i'm working with a new tripod that i like a lot i can zoom in for really close-up detail but I haven't quite figured out the exact perfect height. We're gonna pick up some brown. Now this part right here is where I'm starting to add dimension. So you can see I'm concentrating it only on one half of that circle and I'm just adding pigment. It's very wet and I'm just letting it do its thing for a while. So it is puddling on the Bible pages. It will puddle like that. It's very normal. I'm just running some of it along the edges of the other circle down there. I'm allowing it to bleed over into the more burgundy circles. For this particular piece, that's what I want. I want mixing and blurring of colors. So at this part, I'm going to dip into that. It's actually like a very deep violet and it's really dark and you'll see how I kind of troubleshoot that during this next portion. I'm adding more depth and dimension. I'm not trying to focus one portion of the page here like light is coming from this way or shadow needs to go that way. I'm just adding interest and dimension to each of these shapes. Where it's a little too dark, I'm taking a rolled paper towel to pick up some of the excess water, the excess pigment, and to sort of blur and move it around. Um, in my use of this color, it ended up being darker than I expected. I wasn't really paying attention to the swatch, like I just told you, use the swatches. I wasn't really thinking about that and i just went in with a lot of pigment and i kind of want to tone that down so this is the first step of that you can use this kind of technique anytime you want to speed up your drying process um, you don't really rub it around you just sort of touch it to the puddles of water and it'll help pick up some pigment and in this case i'm using that i'm going that route instead of using a dryer so now I'm gonna to switch to the number eight Princeton round brush. And I'm just taking water. This is just water, okay? What I'm doing is I am beginning to marry the colors together. Um, I'm picking up little pockets of pigment and adding it to other circles. And I'm not rinsing the brush in between. This is really giving an organic effect to the painting where you get hints of color across the whole page that just blend together they sort of they look like it was on purpose and it is on purpose but it also looks very natural using the water you can also push pigment back um, you can remove pigment from one section of the page and put a shit to the other so now i'm going in with the yellow this is time lapsed for your benefit so you don't have to sit through um, a really long tutorial this bright yellow i am using for contrast and also to add as a base for my gold i could not find my um, starry colors set which has a lighter gold in it so i kind of wanted to give a bright base to where I was going to go in with gold on this particular piece. Still using the Princeton Neptune size eight round brush for this part. So 
So now let's go into 906. It is a white gold. It's stunning. It adds a wash of shimmer and glow over anything. I've used it over acrylics. Um, I've used it just to add a wet look to anything that I'm painting. I'm taking this over the areas that have naturally dried or are drying lighter. Then I'm going to take white. I'm still using the same brush. And any areas that I feel are too dark or they need blending, I'm just taking white. I'm just taking white and softening that, pushing the pigment back a little and giving myself areas again of contrast and it'll really help when we get to the doodling portion of this piece I love how this is coming together so beautifully. I've let it dry for just a little bit. Now I'm going to take a paper towel and this is probably gonna scare some of you, but I just press it. I don't wipe it, I don't swipe it. As you can see, I'm just patting and pressing. I gave it about a five minute dry time before I did this, but that just helps pull up any extra moisture and give me a nice even base to start adding in the gold so i'm still using that number eight round and i'm starting in with some gold pigment and basically anywhere where i have that yellowy green or the yellowy orange depending on which circle it's on top of i am beginning to add in gold detail i'm using a very wet brush with a lot of the metallic paint on there and as you can see, I'm not really rubbing the brush so much as tapping it and sort of, um, how do I say this, sort of smudging it along. I'm not trying to get super defined lines. If anything, I want it to look almost like gold flake or at least the base for that effect. Then I'm going to go into the second gold that I have here. Load up the brush. Same thing. This gold is in my opinion and the way it pulled on my page it pulls slightly different than the other one one of them is a little bit darker more green toned the other one has a bit of a more pink tone um, and so what I do is I began running it along the edges of the first one and also focusing it in along the more burgundy tones it's just one of those things that when you see it visually on your page, if you're working with multiple golds, especially when you swatch them, you'll be able to see which ones are more complementary to each other. And sometimes they have a bronze tone, sometimes they have more of a rose tone to them. Uh, but you can see just where the light is catching some of this gold, you can kind of see that sort of organic effect really starting to pull through and it's softening up that yellow green so it's taking it less of a um how do i say it? less of a psychedelic kind of <laughs> tie-dye effect and it's softening it i'm taking some white and i am again softening and blurring if there's anywhere that i feel like it's too harsh of a transition i add white now I've picked up the bigger quill brush and it just has water. I do not have any paint on it, it's just water. And I'm lightly running it along borders of pigment. And what this does is it's going to give that natural effect and it's not going to, you're not gonna see brush strokes. It's just going to be pools of pigment. So at this point, you've got most of your color, like we're pretty much done. 
What I like to do for this piece is to splatter the page. So I'm taking just what's left on that larger quill brush and I'm tapping it. And you can start to see these little tiny little pinpoint dots that are showing up. And you also see larger ones hit the page. Now, when that happens, I don't want you to panic because look, just take the brush and smooth them and make additional circles. Just add more colors. Go in with your darker color. I did switch to a number eight. Then right here, I want you to watch the page. Look when I splatter white across it. It adds light. It adds brightness. It changes the dimension again. And it just, it does something that's so hard to describe, but it's beautiful. Okay, here, the page is dry. All right. I let it sit out and dry. I, of course, skipped that so you didn't have to experience that. Look at those yummy, delicious metallics and those textures. It's just stunning. We're going to start doodling now. This is such a relaxing and meditative part. I'm definitely going to explain how I do this. I'm using the Jelly Roll Stardust to start. There's a silver and a gold tone Stardust. And what I'm doing here is I'm running like the silver tone. I'm running along the edges of that white gold pigment and the areas that are really bright. I'm just running it along the edges and giving it that burst of light. And then I'll do the same thing with the other toned Stardust pen. And this is similar to like Perrin ink. Um, I'm not creating whole pockets around here. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything like that. I'm just highlighting ridges and just adding light. That's really what this is. It adds sparkle that the camera doesn't really capture, but in person you can't miss it. I mean, it's just stunning. Um, this is similar to if you've ever been in person with me when I have taught my galaxy or my nebula pages it's similar to that where you're giving almost this like lightning effect. You can sort of see it there a little bit. And I just keep going until I, I pause, I assess. That's something that you don't see when it's time lapse, but I do pause. I look at the page. I see where, where do I need something more? Where do I need to maybe push something back a little? And I just keep going with this. Um, this is also the portion, okay, when you can see now I'm beginning to add pattern. I did want to point that out. I'm using those metallics. You can barely see them, but I'm adding crosses in that bubble. Um, in another one, I add lines. You can see I'm adding stars in that one there. I do this with the metallic first, and then I will come in and highlight it with a gray and then a white jelly roll. But for me personally, when I'm journaling, this is the portion of the page where I'm not obsessively thinking over what I'm doing. I'm more meditating on the scripture. This particular story of Ruth, you'll see on screen, I'm going to switch various colors of jelly roll um, just that are complementary. But this particular portion of scripture in Ruth, to me, just speaks of journey the journey of life. Um, she was starting out in this story. Ruth is starting out as a widow and homeless. That's, that's essential. That's it. She's a widow and she's homeless. She has the choice to go back where she came from or to move forward with her mother-in-law into something completely unknown into a land that she doesn't come from people that she doesn't come from doesn't know anyone it's this journey okay I do just want to comment you can see I'm I'm still adding complementary colors here okay but when I was meditating on this scripture you know she reaches the point where she says to her mother-in-law I want to go with you and she says where you go I will go where you stay I will stay your people will be my people and your God, my God. That is such a powerful concept to think about, to imagine being a widow 
you've lost everything, you've lost your home, and you make this commitment, this vow, to move forward into the total unknown. Just, you have no idea what's coming next. You can see I'm still continuing. For any who were like, wait, what was that? I just switched to a blue pen. I'm highlighting the edges here. I'm um, adding, again, it just adds depth and texture. Really, any of these steps that I'm doing are just extra, but running that complementary color of Jelly Roll along the edge just gives great contrast. I do want to highlight what I'm doing here and then we'll jump back into talking about the message. I'm taking a gray, um, this is a moon shadow Jelly Roll. So it's not as bold as white because I wanted different levels of doodles. And you can see I'm just using hash marks, okay? Just little hash marks. They almost look like stitching marks. If I had done every single one of these circles in just white, it really would have, would have translated flat, in my opinion. So doing some of the doodles in metallic, some of the doodles in these gray moon shadow pens, and then you'll see me add white. It again adds texture, adds dimension, pulls certain uh, doodles forward, pushes other ones back, and it just really, it just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, honestly. Um, I will pause when I get to the white, but you see I'm just adding hash marks, crosses. In some of them, I add squares, I add dots. You can pause at any time to see what I do where, but this isn't necessarily something that I feel like needs to be quote copied. You can see on the bottom right, I'm adding squares. I could have done florals. I could have done any kind of art, any kind of doodle. These pieces, they're not about the doodle so much as they are about the process. So now I'm going in here with the white jelly roll and this is where I really believe you'll be able to see the contrast um, between the white and the gray I start out by adding some stars and it just really pops it's just beautiful you can see like I'm not doodling the whole circle of each one I'm just doodling portions that again just was a creative decision I made this sort of thing can be done with any color palette and any sort of vision you have, but you can see where the white really begins to pop. So getting back into the passage and what it spoke to me, this really touched my heart in terms of the journey of life. And what you'll see when I do the lettering is I, I turn it into a prophetic declaration from myself to the Lord, which is how I feel Bible journaling impacts my life the most is when it's my communication between me and the Lord. Because we honestly y'all we don't know what's coming next ever um we can have you know the lord speak to us give us insight into the future prophetic people receive insight into the future but when it comes down to the intimate details of our lives we really don't know and this relationship with jesus is one that's meant to be built on trust and faith and so for me, when I was painting these circles and doing these doodles, what I saw prophetically through this is the picture of a journey, the journey of life, the stepping stones of life, the seasons. Sometimes there's really bright moments. Sometimes there's dark moments. Sometimes there's small changes like the smaller circles. Sometimes there's bigger ones life ebbs and flows and the word of God speaks of seasons 
But to me, this passage and this painting are about making that commitment to the Lord of me making the commitment to the Lord of saying, you know, Father God, where you go, in other words, where you lead me, because yes, he is omnipresent, but where he leads me, I will go where you stay, where you, where you rest, where your, your spirit rests, where you plant me for a season. I will honor that. And I will stay planted where you plant me. Your people will be my people. To me, that speaks of a commitment to love the body of Christ, to love the family of God. And then to say to him, you are my God. That is how this passage spoke to me personally. Now, I strongly encourage everyone, whenever I teach, to utilize what speaks to your spirit. Bible journaling, in my opinion, should be a very personal experience. Now, I love the community that we have on Facebook where we can share what's inspiring us. I love filming like this. I really do. I love live videos. Um, so I'm not saying like you don't share it. What I mean by personal is it should be a, it should be something bubbling up out of your spirit, whether it's the artwork that you are trying, that you are creating, whether it's the passage itself, whether it's, um, a dream that you've had or something that you have seen in your spirit, in your mind's eye that you just want to put to paper whether it's collage, any of that, it should just be something that bubbles up out of your relationship with Jesus. Look at that. Look at all of those textures, dimension, different doodles, different inks. These are all jelly roll. Any gel pen should suffice. As you can see, no bleed through. And here I'm just bending the page so you can really catch some of those metallic doodles that sometimes don't show up it's dry and it just looks so visually interesting to me now I'm a lover of the abstract so that definitely plays a role in my opinion um, but I just feel like for me abstract art is very meditative for me and it's how I best connect with the word of God in terms of Bible journaling. So for my personal time, like, you know, if I wasn't explaining this to you, there would be worship music on and I would be meditating on the meaning of the word and just allowing the paint to flow. You can see here I'm using my own handwriting. I'm a big fan of that. Hand lettering is not my niche. I'm using pencil first so that I don't have any um, any spell check moments, <laughs> any spelling errors, and just really contemplating how I want the words to flow. I specifically wanted them to flow like a journey down the page. I like using my own handwriting from a technical standpoint simply because I am not good at hand lettering. But from a personal standpoint, it just it impacts me and it anchors me to the word a little bit more um, when I use my handwriting. Now you will see I will teach lessons where I use stamps, where I use stickers, where I attempt photography. So I do a little bit of it all but especially on a piece where it's truly just something that's speaking to my spirit I tend to default to my own handwriting. It's personal preference there's not a quote-unquote right way to do it but here's where I'm putting that phrase where you stay I stay your people will be my people and then I will add you are my God it's my personal declaration to the Lord and it just sticks in my mind it just anchors in my soul
I hope you enjoyed this session with me today. This was session number two in our series on doodlescapes, and I look forward to sharing more with you. I would love to hear from you about your process with learning how to doodle, how to journal, how to do this in a prophetic way or in a Bible study way or as a part of your worship of the Lord. And I just really hope that this connected with you. Be sure again to come join us over in our Facebook group, Art with Abba. If you're watching there already, leave me a comment. Let me know if you're watching, use hashtag replay. And I look forward to seeing everything you create. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.